Good morning YouTube! Today we are removing, stripping and rebuilding the rear brake calipers on the car. So we're replacing the seals, replacing the sliders, getting it working and looking lovely again. We'll also show you how to replace the brake pads at the same time if that's all you need to do. Now, after all that trouble we had with Warner last time, we will not be mentioning Led Zeppelin or their songs at any point during the making of this video. No siree! Do you like my new jumper by the way? It's a cashmere. Oops. Whether you're completely stripping the caliper or just replacing the pads, either way you need to remove the caliper from the car, which means undoing two bolts, one at the top just there and a similar one just down the bottom of the caliper on the back, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Now, if you're just replacing the pads, then just undo those two bolts, pull the caliper out, and then you can leave this flexible hose attached and do the whole job just down here on the ground, grubbing around on the floor. However, because I'm going to strip it, the entire caliper, I'm going to take this flexible hose off as well. So if you want to do that, then just get a brake hose clamp and attach it as near to the caliper as you can and then we can undo the banjo bolt and that will minimise the loss of brake fluid disconnect the handbrake cable and then undo the banjo for the flexible hose with the 11mm socket and you'll lose a bit of fluid from the caliper but not much Collect the copper washers, there is one each side of the flexible hose there. Now ideally you would replace them, but you can reuse them if you're a bit of a tight ass. You just need to anneal the copper. So to do that, just heat it up with a blowtorch or in a gas cooker until it's cherry red and then let it cool down and that anneals the copper, it restores the ductility so you can reuse them. But anyway, let's not ramble on. <coughs> And then we're looking at the back side of the caliper now. You need to remove the two bolts that hold the caliper onto the car, which is this one at the bottom here, and the other one is at the top just there. And because of the American oranges of the caliper, they are an imperial head. It's an 11 16 inch head, but an 18 millimeter socket will do. They're fairly tight, and the bottom one is quite hard to get at because the bottom of the damper is in the way. Oh, there you go. When you've taken the pair of them out, then you can just separate the handbrake cable from the caliper and you should be able to just slide the caliper off the disc. Even if you're just replacing the pads, just do a quick visual check of the rest of it while you're in here. So if some previous bodger has pinched the boots like that and split them, putting it back on, then they'll need to be replaced. Um, flip it over, check that your sliders slide reasonably freely as well. If the sliders seize like that, then the pads will lock on and it'll damage your discs and the brakes will have no feel and won't work properly. Um, flip it over as well and just check that the handbrake mechanism is working okay. So just rock it backwards and forwards a bit. Don't stroke the handbrake cable all the way across, you'll push the piston out. Um, uh, but just rock it and make sure it returns to the stop like that. To remove the pads, get hold of the caliper so it can't escape and then start with the outer pad, lever back that clip and then just sort of try and prise the brake pad out while holding the clip out. Now, the trick is getting them both out at the same time. There you go. Okay, so that's the outer pad removed. Then for the inner pad, Hopefully you can just about see this metal clip here holds onto the brake pad and that's supposed to be attached to the piston. It's supposed to sit in that groove just there in the piston, but this one's just rusted away completely. So what you would normally do is just get lever in there and just lever the pad out of the clip. Then the pad can come out, but what should happen is that clip should stay in the groove on the piston. This one though is rusted to pieces, so it's just hanging about loose there. Skip forward in the video when we rebuild the caliper, you'll see what this is supposed to like be like and how it's supposed to be attached to the piston. Then to get the piston back into the caliper, the only way to do it really is with the brake caliper rewind tool because the piston is on a threaded shaft, so you need to apply downward pressure to it while turning it. Now for the left hand caliper, you need to rotate the piston clockwise as we're looking at it here. But for the right hand caliper, you need to rotate the piston anti-clockwise. That means that you're going to need to get a brake caliper rewind tool that has got both types in it, a left-handed thread and a right-handed threaded tool. If you don't have a rewind tool and you're desperate, you can just about do it without. If you get a G-clamp and apply some axial force to the piston, so I've got it in a vise here, but you can do it with a clamp just as well. And then, while, because there's a spring mechanism there, so you need to load that spring mechanism up to lock it. 
And then while it's clamped like that, if you then rotate the body of the caliper in the right direction, and hopefully, as you can see, that will eventually get it back in, but it is a bit of a cludge. But it's generally much easier and altogether more satisfactory with a proper rewind tool, which you haven't seen one before, is like this. You have a die, which has lugs in, which fit in the slots of the piston. That goes on the end of the tool, and there's a reaction plate which sits inside the caliper there. Then you just screw the tool up to the piston. And rotate the tool in the correct direction to wind the piston back. Easy. To dismantle the caliper, start by knocking the slider pins out with a hammer and a drift. There we go. And then remove the boots with a small screwdriver. Now. But these calipers are off the American market W body series of cars, things like the Chevrolet Lumina, Buick Regal and so on, which means that they've never really been available new in the UK since they went obsolete from Lotus. I don't know, you may still be able to get them new in North America. But if you're in the, new, the UK and you want as good as new ones, your options are either to refurbish the one you've got or to swap it out for a complete refurbished unit on exchange. The latter will cost you about £180, but today we're going to refurbish this one. Undo this nut which holds the handbrake lever on with an 11 16 inch socket. And the nut is a right handed thread on both calipers, so remove the nut, then gently remove the lever arm and disconnect the spring. So when you've got the lever off, now take care under here because the workshop manual gets this wrong. Underneath here, the next thing you should find is a metal washer, which is called the anti-friction washer. And if you just leave that off. Right. And that, the original of these was a metal slightly domed washer with a hexagon headed insert and that should be underneath the lever arm and then below that there should be this thing which is called the lever seal which is a rubber lit seal which has got a sort of, sort of brass insert on the back which sits against the caliper body. Now the workshop manual, diagram in the workshop manual gets those the wrong way around. It says that what you should find is the friction washer and then the lever seal that way around. That's not correct. It's the lever seal should be sealing the shaft here and then the anti-friction washer is the metal washer that sits between that and the lever so that the lever can move against the metal of the washer rather than wearing away the rubber seal. Okay. Now don't get too hung up about it, it's quite possible if someone's rebuilt your caliper in the past they'll have put them on that the way around the workshop manual says it works that way and in any case the rebuild kits come with a different set of parts to these anyway but uh, just so you know that is the correct orientation. Then get a 14 millimeter socket on the nut on this screw and we're going to use that to push the piston out so we're going to turn the screw in the normal direction that the handbrake applies to it so if you think about it, the handbrake lever was pulling in that direction so we need to turn this one anti-clockwise 14 millimeter socket on there and you'll just see the piston coming out and just shove that all the way out there you go withdraw the piston then when you've got the piston out lever this little rubber plug out which is called it's called a check valve but it's a check in the sense that you're supposed to lever it out to check that the piston isn't leaking now theoretically you shouldn't get any brake fluid coming out of that hole and if you do get any brake fluid coming out of the hole it indicates that a seal inside here is broken down so you're supposed to replace the piston however 
in this case, there's probably a couple of drips of brake fluid come out there, but you've got to remember that's probably 25 years worth of accumulated brake fluid leaking past the piston there. I mean, I think in, in practice, most people find you get a little bit of brake fluid coming out of that hole. I think if it's absolutely pouring out, or if you're in any doubt at all, then replace the piston. But to be honest, you, you usually do get a little bit of brake fluid coming out of the hole there. Just use your judgment. If you're in any doubt, like I say, just replace the piston. Then, there's a spring in there, just pull that out. Then remove the piston boot. Now it doesn't sit in a groove the way a normal piston boot does. It's a rigid wall thing which is an interference fit into the bore of the caliper. So just get an old screwdriver and just get underneath that outer lip there and just gently prise it out, just taking care not to scratch anything. It's coming now. There you go. So you see it's just a smooth wall thing, it's just a press fit into the caliper body. Then the next thing we need to get out is there's a circlip underneath here. So get a pair of bent nose circlip pliers. So you can just about see the ears of the circlip there. So just get the circlip pliers onto the holes. And withdraw the circlip. And then underneath that you can now just pull out this thing which is called the piston locator. So that's a little sort of seal which grabs the walls of the piston. It's part of the handbrake adjusting mechanism. And then the last thing is just push the actuator screw out of the body. So just push it from the back and remove it. And on here there is a thrust washer just there and there's a little rubber seal on the lever there and we're going to replace both of those. They both come with the rebuild kit. And the final thing to remove is the piston seal, which is a rubber seal which is sitting in a groove just inside the bore of the caliper just there, just on the end of the screwdriver. So just get work that out with a small screwdriver, just take great care that you don't scratch the bore of the caliper. So just gently lever it out and withdraw it. So just laid out on the bench here, here's the complete collection of parts in the order in which you should have encountered them. So on the outside is the piston boot, underneath that is the circlip that holds in the piston locator, and then in a groove behind the piston locator is the piston seal. The piston has the little rubber check valve in the end of it, and then behind the piston on the inside of the caliper is this spring. Sitting, screwed into the piston, sitting inside the spring is this actuator screw. The thrust washer is on the end of the actuator screw. It's got a copper face which faces towards the piston, and it's got a Teflon coated side which faces in that direction. Behind the thrust washer in this groove is the shaft seal for the actuator screw. Then there's the back wall of the caliper body, then outside the caliper there is the lever seal, then the anti-friction washer and the lever itself, the handbrake lever itself bears against the anti-friction washer and is held down by the nut and is returned by the spring. Before we rebuild the caliper, just check the surface condition and the thickness of your brake discs because when this car was young, surface condition of discs was a failure item on the UK's annual MOT road worthiness test. Now, because the discs are quite expensive, if the car has failed its MOT because the discs are scored or pitted, then it's likely that the owner is going to have had them skimmed. They're going to machine the damaged area off the surface rather than replacing the disc. Now these days, surface condition of discs isn't a failure item anymore. As long as the discs work, it doesn't really matter what the surface looks like. However, structural weakening is still a failure item. So if, as in this case, your discs have been skimmed down below the wear limit, the minimum thickness for the discs is 10.9 millimetres. If they've been skimmed down below that, and these have been skimmed a long way below that, then you really should replace them. Surface condition doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if they've got enough grooves in them that if you put them on a turntable, they'd pay a possible rendition of Rock and Roll by Led Zeppelin. <laughs> but thickness really is. So if they are too thin, replace them. If you do need to replace your discs, because they've got the wheel bearings in them for the hub there, I think we'll do this in the next video in this series when we're stripping and rebuilding the rear suspension. Rebuilding the brake caliper, we stripped down the left hand brake caliper, but I still need to sandblast and zinc plate that one. So just to speed things along a little bit, I'm going to rebuild the right hand one for the video. It's just a mirror image of the left hand one, so the idea remains the same. 
as does the song. Now, helper case is out at work at the moment, and that's good because it means we've got kind of tacit approval to do this on the kitchen table in front of the warmth of the Arga, rather than having to do it out in the cold garage. When you work on the internals of your brake, scrupulous cleanliness is important. So I've got a 10 millimeter bolt in the hole for the hose to prevent dirt getting in. And if your other half does come home when you're in the middle of doing this and busts you doing it on the kitchen table, then that is your backup excuse that you needed a clean environment to do the work in. Start by fitting a new bleed nipple and tightening that up. Steve Roberts at SJ Sports Cars has done a nice job in putting together the rebuild kits for the calipers. The seal kit uh, is a per caliper kit, that's about £20 per caliper. Um, that's a nice mixture of original seals and for some bits that he can't get hold of originally anymore, he's found suitable replacements for. So that's about £20 per caliper. The other thing you'll need is the, what's called the hardware kit, which is an axle set. So that you get enough in here to do both calipers, but that includes the sliders, the clips to hold the pads on, the rubber boots for the sliders, and the bolts to hold the caliper back onto the car. Um, that's about £27, including VAT in the UK which is about 27 US dollars at the moment, so it's good value for you guys in the States. So let's start by rebuilding the seals and piston. The first thing we need to fit is the piston seal, which is this sort of square edged seal, and that goes in the deepest groove at the back there. So we're just gonna lubricate everything with clean brake fluid, lubricate the bore and the groove, and the seal itself with clean brake fluid. and then just pop it into the deepest groove. Now hopefully you can see that you'll get the idea. You may need a small screwdriver just to help it go in. The only trick is make sure you don't get it twisted. If you're using a screwdriver, just make sure you, the main thing is not to scratch the bore. Hopefully you can see now, that's the seal in place. The next thing we need to do is to fit the piston locator, which is this rubber covered metal circlet to the piston. So we're gonna slide that over the piston. Now, Lotus had a special tool for doing this, which you're unlikely to have it in your garage. Uh, I think the easiest way is to do it in a vise. The back edge of the piston is tapered, and so that means we can use that to just push the piston locator over that taper and slide it onto the body of the piston. Now ideally, use a bit of ingenuity here, ideally you'd find a piece of tube with an internal diameter of about 36 millimeters, which would be just right to sort of slide the piston locator over the, the piston, which itself is about 35 millimeters in diameter. I'm using a socket here, so I'm gonna put the socket on the back onto the piston locator and then put the whole lot in the vise and then just press them together. Now, you could also, if you haven't got anything metal is the right diameter, you could use a piece of scrap wood, just drill a 16 millimeter diameter hole in it so that bit can go through, but you, you'll, you'll figure something out. But the idea then is just mount it all in the vise, get it all nice and square. The trick is getting it square. A bit of silicon spray lubricant might help the rubber to slide over. Let me just see if we can press that on. There you go. And once we've got it started, then we can just work it over with our fingers. A good one. And I know some people do that job with a piston locator using circlip pliers. I must say I find that very difficult. I think it's very hard to do it without damaging the rubber. So I think the vice is the better way of doing that, but whatever works for you. The other thing is this hole in the end of the piston. Now originally there was a plug in there which was called a check valve and it was a check in the sense that you could take it out to check that the piston wasn't leaking fluid. If yours is missing as mine is then a five millimeter diameter push fit plastic rivet, the sort of thing that's used to hold trim clips on, just cut that down to length, just to stick that in there, or just really anything to plug the hole, just to prevent dirt getting in there, will do the job. And the next thing we need to do is to rebuild the screw. Now originally, 
The screw used a copper washer which was coated in Teflon on its back side. The rebuild kit uses a steel washer but again there's a Teflon coating on one side. Originally the, cup, the, the washer went on so that the copper side was towards the piston and the Teflon coating is towards the, um, the, sh the short end with the hexagon headed flat on it there. Okay, it's that way around. So when you're fitting the new one make sure that you do the same. The steel now is going to be towards the piston and the Teflon coating is going to be towards the um, hexagon headed uh, nut there. Then the next thing to go on is the shaft seal which is this little rubber uh, seal, this little square edge seal. So lubricate that with brake fluid and then just work that over the end of the screw. And again it gets twisted, just small screwdriver just to make sure it's nice and square in the groove and then screw the whole lot into the piston. Okay. Just before we put it all back together actually it's really clever how this works in case you're wondering. What happens is that as you pull the handbrake lever on the handbrake lever operates the hex head there and that turns the screw. Now because this is obviously inside, but because the washer there is against the inside back wall of the caliper here, the screw can't advance out in that direction. So what happens is that means the piston gets pushed in that direction. So it's the piston being pushed to the right as you were looking at it that pushes the brake pads on and, and holds the handbrake on. Now as the piston advances, it get, gets pushed through the piston locator there because the piston locator can't go anywhere with the piston because it's held in by the, the circlip. When you release the handbrake, the combination of the piston locator grabbing hold of the piston plus the spring pressure from this spring mean that the piston now can't come back in this direction. So as the screw tries to turn back that way as you release the handbrake, the piston is sort of held in that position and the whole assembly turns. So as you put the handbrake on, the piston goes out, but as you release it, the whole assembly turns and the piston stays in its new position, and that way the wear is automatically taken up each time. Right, so let's get the whole assembly back into the caliper. Now, this is the bit the workshop manual isn't particularly clear about, but have the piston located towards the bottom end of the piston. Get everything nicely lubricated with brake fluid so it will go in. Then fit the spring into its groove on the underside of the piston and then insert all of that into the body of the caliper. Now before you do that, make sure you've got your circlip and your circlip pliers at the ready. And then slide the piston in until the piston locator is sitting in its groove so that we can get the circlip in. And the tricky thing with these videos tends to be that either I can see what I'm doing or you can but rarely both of us at the same time but once you've got the piston locator sitting down just get your circlip into its groove okay that's it now it can't go anywhere and then just have a very careful check that that circlip is properly in its groove all the way around because it's a faff of a thing to fit. Then the next thing we need to fit is the piston boot. So make sure you fit it the right way around. The open lip here, that needs to go to the piston side, that needs to face downwards. And it's going to go into the second groove in the piston. So just lubricate it again, bit of brake fluid. And slide it into its groove. Then with the piston boot just hanging like that, push the piston to the bottom of the board so that the actuator screw comes out of this end. And you may need to use a clamp to get it to go down through the new seal. Take care though, because although it's a little bit hard to explain, 
the screw tends to unscrew itself from the piston so make sure that as you're pressing down with the clamp that the, 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 the screw is coming centrally through the hole there but you're not pressing the piston against the other end of your clamp here because the screws come out if that has happened then just turn the turn the screw in the other way and then sit the piston all the way to the bottom And you'll know you've got your piston all the way to the bottom because the piston will be flush with the mouth of the caliper body and the hexagon headed nut on the back here will be protruding from the caliper body and although there'll be a bit of play in the thread there'll be no position in which you can rotate that all the way into the caliper body so it disappears okay if it hasn't gone down already then at this point you may as well shove the rest of the seal in there so just get a suitable drift like a big socket or something over that and just tap the rest of the um, seal into its bore in the caliper body there. Next we need to attach the lever arm. So wind the actuator screw so you've got as much of the, the screw showing protruding from the caliper body as possible because you're going to need it because the new lever seal is a little bit too thick if truth be told but slip that over the top of the shaft there and the next thing to go on is the new lever seal in the rebuild kit is a two-part thing so you've got this sort of rigid bodied rubber thing which goes over the shaft itself and then there's this lip seal which goes around the lever seal um, as a sort of loose fit so it's a bit of a fat to fit but sort of get it over there as best you can and then when you've got that on the anti-friction washer goes next now the anti-friction washer in the rebuild kit is this little nylon thing um, but I've sandblasted and zinc plated the original metal one so I'm going to fit that instead so just slip that over the top the next thing is to fit the lever arm, this is the correct orientation of it, with the bit that the cable attaches to between the abutment for the outer cable and the off stop on the caliper body there. And then when you've got it lined up so that the hex of the lever arm is over the hex of the nut, then get the nut onto it and get it torqued up to 45 Newton metres as soon as possible. Because I say it's a real faff to fit this because of that really thick lever seal that comes with the rebuild kit. You just need to make sure that obviously the lever arm hex is grabbing the, the hex of the nut there. Now, you may have noticed that we've zinc plated and blue passivated the caliper body, but we've yellow passivated all the fittings here. Now, when my mother in law saw these, she thought that I'd gold plated them because, and you knew this was coming. is gold. No stairway. Denied. When you've got the nut on, the temptation to pump the lever arm a few times to check that everything's working is almost irresistible, but do try, because if you do, you'll have to wind the piston back in again. The only thing that remains is to attach the spring. Oh, there we go. The final thing when you've got the spring back on is to check that the mechanism is free to move. Now don't stroke the lever arm miles because you'll push the piston out, but just rock it backwards and forwards enough to make sure that it moves and that it returns under spring pressure to the stop. Because you'll probably find if you've talked it up to 45 newton metres that the mechanism is locked. If that's the case, then you're just going to have to back the nut off until the mechanism is free to move. It might be a good idea to put some thread lock on the threads there because you may have to loosen the nut quite a bit in order to get it moving freely like that. To fit the sliders, get the silicon grease that comes with the rebuild kit and lubricate the four. The slider, filling the central groove there, which is the grease retainer. And then just put a bit on the inner lips of the boots just to help those slide over the sliders. Then fit the boot to its groove in the caliper body. So just put it in and just twisting until it seats down. Yeah. Then the rebuild kit comes with this nice little thing I've not seen before, this little plastic cone. So that sits over the top of the slider like that. Get a bit more silicon grease 
on there just to lubricate, so it's like a little bullet vibrator, isn't it? And then insert it from this side through the boot. And the idea there is that the comb pushes all the way through the boot and the, the lips of the seal won't grab the groove in the slider. So push the slider all the way through until it's out of the way. Now you can fit the other boot into its groove on the other side. Put it until it will spin around in the groove, that means it's properly seated. And now we can shove the slider back through until the lips pop into the onto the slider. Easy. There we go. And then just repeat on the other side. That's that done. At this point, we can welcome the brake pad refitters back into the room. So wind the piston in until it's in that orientation so that one of the uh, slots is parallel with the line of the sliders and the other one is facing radially outwards from the centre of the wheel. Then get this little fellow, which is the clip that holds the inner pad in place. And there's some lugs on it, so you need to put the lugs down through the grooves in the piston there and then press it firmly down and turn it at the same time so it's got those lugs are going to engage in the outer groove in the piston so press it down and twist it that's what it looks like when it's on properly then take the inner pad and the reason that you need to line the piston up in that orientation is those buttons are going to engage in that slot in the piston and then just push it into the outer edge, the outer clip for the pad first and then just snap it into the lugs on this side. There you go. This thing, in case you're wondering, that is the wear indicator. So when the pads wear down, this little bit of metal makes contact with the disc and makes an awful graunching sound so that you know that the pad is almost worn out. The correct orientation is that way round so that it's trailing, so that in the normal rotation direction, the disc is going through the caliper and the pads and then touching this thing on the way out. It's in a trailing position. To fit the outer pad, these buttons on the outer pad are going to engage in these holes in the caliper and then these clips just go around the back of these lugs just to hold it in place. So just get a man-sized screwdriver and sort of lever the clips back while you manhandle the pad into place. Now, once you've got the first one in so it can't wriggle around, it's a lot easier. There you go, that's it, it's ready to go back on the car. Refit the brake caliper. Copper grease up your new bolts and do those up and they are done up to 100 newton meters. Right. Then reattach the handbrake cable. Then refit the flexible hose and torque it up. So you want the banjo bolt, a new or annealed copper washer, put that through the banjo fitting, and there's another copper washer between the banjo and the caliper body. And then just torque that up to the correct torque. Now for the original mild steel fittings, they were torqued up to 40 newton meters, which is very tight for a brake fitting. But for Stainless steel fittings like this on these replacement hoses that is too tight. So about 20 newton meters would be right for a stainless steel 10 millimeter brake banjo. And that's it, just inside the car, pump the handbrake lever a few times to take up the slack and self adjusting mechanism for the handbrake and to make sure that's working properly. Then just bleed the air out of the hydraulic system the same way we did for the front brakes, and the job's done. There you go, you see, over half an hour of video and we never mentioned Led Zeppelin once. So is the car now. See you next time.